University, and he will talk about Frobenius maps on the rings of invariance. Thank you. Ah, ah, ah. Do you hear me? So I, I thank the organizers uh, for uh, giving me an opportunity to uh, give a talk here uh, at the nice, very nice place, nice sea, uh, very nice uh, institute, and uh, uh, very uh, good place. So today's my talk is Frobenius maps uh, on the ring, rings of invariant. So the uh, tight closure uh, things on the, uh, but the, to, today's talk, uh, there is no tight closure, but the Frobenius things uh, on the in, in rings of invariance, and mainly on the uh, finite group schemes. So uh, let P be a prime number and K a, a perfect field of characteristic P. So A are positively graded. Positively graded means that uh, it is graded non-negatively. And uh, moreover, uh, A0 is uh, the base field K. Um, and it is finitely generated, uh, of course, commutative K algebra. And let Fe, uh, Fe A, uh, be the Frobenius map of ETH Frobenius map of A. Uh, it is a map from A to A, and uh, this target A is written uh, in, in such a way, uh, E A. And uh, Fe A, A is, the, of course, A to the P to the E, and uh, the element A to the P to the E, viewed as an element right here, is have some this E on the shoulder, uh, the left shoulder. And the maximal ideal, the irrelevant maximal ideal of A is denoted by M, and T, let T be a, a module finite. Uh, this one is non-commutative uh, uh, because the uh, group is non-commutative, uh, non-commutative graded A algebra. This is the setting. Now, as T is module finite over uh, A, uh, A is a positively graded, K, uh, finitely generated K algebra, uh, so the Q group mod T, this is the category of Q graded finitely generated T modules. The ring T itself is Z graded, uh, but uh, we need the Q grading because when we take the Frobenius, uh, the grading must be divided by P. So, uh, of course, uh, Z log, we can, maybe we may use this ring, but. Uh, uh, Q is uh, much simpler, so I use the Q graded. So uh, the Q group mod T is crucial, namely uh, it, it is uh, an additive category. Of course, it is an abelian category. Additive category with uh, each object can be decomposed into indecomposable object whose endomorphism ring is local. Such a category is called Kruhl-Schmidt, and uh, the famous Kruhl-Schmidt theorem holds for uh, this category. Namely, uh, any object can be uniquely a finite direct sum of indecomposable objects. Now, uh, let M be a Q-graded finite T module, then the following are equivalent. The first, M is indecomposable in uh, mod T. The second is MM. M is the maximal ideal of A. Uh, so A is a commutative ring, so we can localize. MM is indecomposable in mod uh, TM. The third, uh, M hat. Hat is the uh, M adic completion. Uh, MM is indecomposable in mod T hat. Mod means the, uh, finitely gener the category of uh, finitely generated Q graded modules. So uh, M hat is nothing but it is uh, A finite also. So M hat is A hat tensor AM. And uh, 
the force, M is indecomposable in Q group mode T. So the indecomposability does not depend on the grading or, or forgetting. It's, it's, the, it's the same thing. As a corollary, we have the following equivalence. So let M and N be, and be objects of Q group mode T. Then the following are equivalent. Uh, if M is decomposed into indecomposable objects, say, uh, some I, M, I, and N is also decomposed into some J, N, J, and uh, then we have the number of indecomposables the same, and after uh, moving the ordering, uh, then uh, Ni is isomorphic to m sigma i di. Sigma is some permutation, and di is the shift of degree. So up to permutation of the degree shifting, uh, the indecomposable summons are isomorphic. The second condition is m is isomorphic to n. Uh, so you see that uh, of course, one implies two. This is a very obvious thing. And two implies three. Three is uh, if we localize that M, they are isomorphic. And third, uh, when we even take the completion, they are isomorphic. So th this uh, order is uh, trivial. But when M hat is N, uh, isomorphic to N hat, uh, the number one also holds. So they are. Uh, equivalent. So uh, we use this fact later. Uh, let C be an additive category. We said uh, bracket C is the abelian group generated by all the inco indico uh, uh, isomorphism classes of, uh, of, of uh, C. Uh, so the generator is the isomorphism class of the objects. And we divide it by the relation uh, m equals to m1 plus m2 uh, whenever m is uh, isomorphic to m1 direct sum m2. So uh, moreover, we said uh, CR equals to R tensor ZC. So if uh, the category C is an abelian category, which is also a uh, uh, cool Schmidt, uh, then uh, this C is freely generated by indecomposable objects. And uh, we write uh, theta star T by Q group mod T R. So uh, it is the uh, R vector space freely generated by indecomposable objects. Now I define theta circle T to be the theta star t divided by m bracket minus m bracket m c bracket. So we ignore the difference of the degree. So uh, if they agree uh, after shifting, then we regard that these objects are the same. This is the theta circle t. Then uh, it is easy to see that theta circle t it has in the circle Q group mod T as its R basis, where in the circle Q, uh, I'm sorry, in the circle Q group mod T is by definition in the Q group mod T, this is the uh, isomorphism classes of uh, in the composable object uh, divided by the relation. Uh, they, they agree when uh, they are isomorphic after the degree shifting. So we ignore the difference of uh, degree. Then uh, when for uh, an alpha, alpha is an element of element of, 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 of theta circle T. So it can be written as a linear combination uh, of the uh, M, where, where M is uh, uh, in the circle uh, Q group mod T, uh, 
it is a li uniquely a linear uh, combination because it is uh, uh, R basis, then we define uh, norm of the alpha is uh, sum of uh, absolute value Cm times Um, where Um is the length uh, of the M over Jm, uh, where J is the radical, the graded radical of, of T. And length T is the length of a module. Then uh, rather denotes the graded radical. Then uh, theta circle is a vector space, and uh, this is a norm. It is easy to check that this is a norm. So it is a normed space. So we can uh, define the uh, limit and the convergence uh, and such a thing. And uh, I would like to define the uh, Frobenius limit of a module, but the limit uh, is not a module a anymore. So it is uh, the, uh, um, uh, element of this abelian group. Now, uh, I'd like to talk about the finite group scheme. Let G be a finite K group scheme. Uh, that is, uh, G is a finite K scheme with uh, uh, a group uh, operation uh, uh, which are uh, morphisms, and namely, uh, G is a K scheme equipped with uh, uh, the product and the inverse, uh, which induces the, uh, for each K scheme X, the X valued points is, gets a group and uh, it, with this uh, uh, morphisms. And now the coordinate ring uh, uh, KG of G is a finite dimensional uh, commutative k hop algebra. Conversely, uh, a finite dimensional commutative k hop algebra uh, yields a finite k group scheme. So they are the same thing. A G module and a, a KG commodule, it is a hop algebra, so it is a co algebra. Uh, so uh, there's a notion of co module. And, uh, and uh, KG star, KG star, as KG is finite dimensional, the dual is. Uh, uh, finite dimensional uh, hop algebra again. So we can talk about the KG star model. So they are one of the same thing. Let G be a finite group. Then uh, H is a K hop algebra uh, with the uh, coproduct defined by the uh, group structure of G. Uh, I skip the uh, detail. So a finite group is a finite group scheme. This is the first example of a uh, finite group scheme. The second uh, example is, so let M be a finite abelian group. Uh, then the group algebra Km is a finite uh, dimensional commutative K-hop algebra. Uh, so it is a commutative algebra because M is commutative. Uh, so the, it is a commutative K algebra. Uh, then uh, when we define the coproduct of uh, uh, M is given by uh, delta M is M tensor M. Uh, such an uh, element is called uh, group-like. And group-like, uh, so letting each element of M group-like, uh, KM is a K-hop algebra. It is commutative and co-commutative. Then uh, spec KM is a, a group scheme. And uh, this is not necessarily uh, reduced. So there is a, a non-reduced K-group scheme, but uh, only in characteristic P. In characteristic zero, uh, every uh, finite group scheme is et al. Uh, in particular, it, uh, they are uh, reduced. However, uh, for example, when M is Z over NZ, uh, then spec kz to the nz is spec kt over t n minus 1. So when a n is uh, p, uh, when n is p, then t to the p minus 1 is uh, t minus 1 to the p. So it has a new potent element, t minus 1. Uh, so it, it cannot be reduced. 
we write this spec K0 over NZ by uh, mu N. So, so the third example is Frobenius kernels. Uh, if H is a commutative k hop algebra, then the Frobenius map, it is also an, uh, Hopf algebra is an algebra, so there's a Frobenius map. Then we can take the spec. Spec is a contravariant functor. So we have a uh, k-morphism, uh, Frobenius morphism uh, from uh, GE to G. Uh, then luckily it is a, a group homomorphism. So we can talk about the kernel of the Frobenius. Uh, this is called the Frobenius kernel of G. And uh, it is always infinitesimal. Infinitesimal means uh, the spec of an Artinian local ring, it has only one prime element, so it is only one element. It is uh, uh, when we take the read of uh, such a group scheme, it is uh, one point, it is a trivial group. So it is uh, set theoretically one point, but it is not a trivial. Uh, this is the infinitesimal group. So Frobenius kernel is always uh, infinitesimal. Now, I'd like to talk about GB modules. So, let B, uh, B is uh, positively graded, finitely generated commutative K algebra on which G acts such that each BI is a G sub module of B. We call such an algebra uh, graded G algebra. And we say that M is a GB module. If M is a G module, B module, the underlying structures as K vector space is coming from the G module structure and the B module structure are the same. And uh, the action uh, B times M to M is G linear. If uh, G is constant group, then uh, this is uh, GBM, GBGM uh, for G in G, B in B, and M in M. So uh, this uh, de describes the uh, rough uh, idea of uh, GB modules. And M is a graded GB module. If M is graded as a B module, and each MI is a, a G sub module. Let H be a K-hop algebra and be a K-module algebra. Uh, it is a B is a K-algebra H module such that the product uh, B times B to B is H linear. As a, H is a Hop algebra, uh, uh, if B is a, a H module, then B tensor B is a H module again. Uh, and we require that the product of B is H linear. Such an object is called uh, K module algebra. We define the smash product uh, B sharp H to be B tensor H as a K vector space. The product of B sharp H is defined by uh, this product uh, and uh, where H is, is the uh, coproduct or image of the coproduct of H is written as uh, such a Swedler's notation. Uh, what is important here is uh, B sharp H is a K algebra. And uh, if B is graded, then we can uh, make B sharp H a graded algebra again, uh, letting the element H to be of degree zero. Then uh, it is not so difficult to see that uh, GB module and the uh, smash product B sharp KG star uh, module are one and the same thing. And so uh, the category of GB modules uh, is, is a kind of module category. So it is an abelian category and uh, any filtered direct uh, limit is exact. Av5 and such a thing holds. Av4 star also holds and such a thing. 
And uh, I'd like to talk about the torsor uh, principal bundle, and let G be a k-group scheme of finite type, and F from X to Y be a G-invariant k-morphism between k-schemes of finite type. That is, uh, FGX equals FX holes. We say that F is a principal G bundle uh, if F is faithfully flat and the map C, uh, G times X to X times Y, X given by C, G, X equals G, X, X is an isomorphism. Very roughly speaking, it is locally, but not the risky locally, uh, Locally, uh, using the FPPF topology, uh, it is uh, a trivial G bundle. So the base is Y, then the, uh, it is a projection from G times Y to Y. Uh, uh, not Zaresky locally, it, uh, FPPF locally, uh, f in, in the flat topology. Now, Grotendieck proved that uh, let f from x to y be a principal G bundle, then uh, the pullback f star from the category of quasi-coherent shift of y to the G equivariant uh, uh, quasi-coherent shifts <laughs> of x, this is an equivalence. So very roughly speaking, uh, the module category of the uh, quotient uh, uh, is equivalent to the, uh, G equiv the category of G equivariant modules. So the quotient means the uh, uh, spec of the invariant rings in very rough sense. And the quasi inverse is uh, given by uh, this uh, taking the invariance. So it's alpha inversion of uh, something like this. So when G is spec H and uh, X is spec B and everything is affine, then uh, taking the tensor product, the so base extension is an equivalence whose uh, quasi inverse is uh, taking the G invariance. So this uh, gives the equival equivalence between mod A and mod GB. And also there is some graded version of it. I, I, I skip the uh, details. But the big problem of this uh, uh, framework is uh, uh, there is no example. Uh, although a principal bundle is an ideal quotient, uh, the quotient map uh, spec B to spec A, which appears in invariant theory, is scarcely a principal G bundle. Namely, if G is a finite subgroup of GLV acting on the polynomial ring S equals to sim V in a natural way, then the canonical map from spec S to spec SG is a principal G bundle if and only if G is a trivial group. So there is no example uh, at all. But uh, this is because the origin uh, is always fixed by a linear action. Linear transformation uh, always fixes the origin. So it is a fixed point. Uh, the principal bundle requires that you know uh, G acts freely, so this is, uh, this is the reason why uh, there is no example. Now uh, there is a notion of almost principal bundle, a G equivalent morphism uh, F from X to Y is called an almost principal G bundle uh, when we remove. No, no, not. The, I, I, I'm sorry. This is. This is y set minus v. So there is a uh, big open subset v and u, but that the uh, uh, codimension of the complement, it is a closed subgroup, uh, sub subsets uh, have codimension two or more. And uh, this big op open subset uh, is is a uh, principal G bundle. Then we call that uh, it is a uh, principal, almost principal G, bun principal G bundle, and it is also uh, uh, known as uh, quasi torsor. And we call that uh, a 
closed subgroup scheme G of GLV is called small uh, when uh, the quotient mere from V to V over G uh, is an almost principal G bundle. As an example, uh, if the group is constant, then uh, the sub finite subgroup, subgroup of GLV uh, is small if and only if it does not have a should reflection. Uh, uh, a should reflection is a um, uh, matrix uh, when we take the uh, dif uh, difference between the uh, identity matrix, uh, the rank is one, exactly one, then uh, such a matrix is called a should reflection. And uh, the action is small if and only if there is no should reflection at all. Uh, in invari invariant theory of finite groups, should reflection is uh, very important uh, things. Second uh, uh, example is the determinantal vari variety. And uh, uh, let G is GLE, act on x equals to home v e times home e w, where the dimension of e is smaller than the minimum of dimension v and dimension w, and it is uh, greater than uh, equals to 1. Then, uh, I'm sorry, this is, T is dimension one, so uh, then Doconcini and Protesi proved that uh, the determinantal variety is the quotient of uh, this action, uh, the G action on X. Then the quotient map is, uh, uh, it is not so difficult to prove that uh, it is an almost principal bundle. Using the fact that uh, almost principal bundle, we can uh, uh, prove some uh, important properties of the determinantal varieties. Now we can uh, prove the uh, weaker version of Grothendieck equivalence, uh, which was uh, valid in uh, principal G bundles, uh, so the restrict restricted version of uh, Grothendieck's equivalence also holds for almost uh, principal bundles. So let G be an affine k-group scheme of finite type, and f from x to y be an almost principal G bundle. Assume that x and y are normal, then uh, f given by, so growth, in the Grothendieck's uh, equivalence, we can, we only have to take the inverse image, but we need to take the double dual uh, in order to make the uh, shift to be uh, reflexive. The other side is we only need to take the G invariance. I'm sorry, uh, this is F star G, I'm sorry. This is the quasi inverse. So with this correspondence, uh, these uh, two categories are equivalent, uh, even if it is not a, a principal one bundle. Uh, we only need to assume that they are, it is almost the principal bundle. Using this uh, uh, equivalence, we can prove that uh, prove the higher dimensional Watanabe's theorem. Watanabe's uh, theorem is uh, uh, theorem on invariant subrings, uh, the Gorenstein property of uh, invariant subrings under the action of finite groups, but uh, uh, we can make the uh, group uh, of the higher crude dimension. So let G and uh, F be as in theorem six. Theorem six is uh, the thing. Uh, and let G add denote G with the adjoint G action, and let lambda G be the uh, one-dimensional re representation of G, uh, which is obtained by uh, pulling back uh, using the uh, identity element, uh, identity element, then uh, lambda g is the one-dimensional representation of g, and uh, then omega x uh, corresponds to, almost corresponds to omega y, but we can twist it by lambda g. 
and omega, omega y is almost uh, f star omega x invariance g, but we can twist by the dual of lambda g. So uh, omega y is uh, trivial if and only if omega x is isomorphic to O x tensor lambda g, not O x. So if g is smooth, uh, then uh, lambda g is uh, 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 the dead inverse of the adjoint representation of g. So uh, in particular, if uh, g is smooth, connected, and reductive, uh, then the uh, positive root and the negative root cancel each other, so lambda g is trivial. In this case, omega y is O y, if and only if o x is, omega x is O x. So this is a variant of uh, Watanabe's uh, theorem. Moreover, uh, for finite group schemes, uh, the Watanabe's theorem holds. Uh, let G be a finite K group scheme, V a finite G module, and assume that the action is small. And let S is sim V, and A is the invariant subring SG. Then home SA is isomorphic to S as graded GS modules. This was proved by, uh, I am sorry, uh, I, I can't uh, pronounce uh, uh, this person's name. Is anyone? No? Excuse me? Kalpahal Rojas? Thank you. Uh, uh, this person approved. Uh, I noticed the, uh, this uh, existence of this theorem on, on the way, <laughs> the very long way <laughs> from Japan to here. So. <laughs> Uh, so the theorem is equivalent to say that uh, omega A is isomorphic to omega SG. So uh, as a corollary, let the notation be as in theorem 8. In general, uh, the A invariant of A is smaller than or equals to AS. So we require that the action is small. And G is a finite group scheme. where A denotes the A invariant, and moreover, the following are equivalent. G is a closed subgroup scheme of SLV, and the second, A is quasi gorenstein So uh, in modular uh, uh, invariant theory, uh, the rings of invariants need not be Cohen macaulay uh, uh, However, uh, still, this Watanabe's uh, theorem holds for, uh, in this form. If A is quasi gorenstein then uh, the A invariant is uh, the same. And of course, the A invariant of the polynomial ring is the minus of the uh, number of variables. So it is minus dim V. Uh, the equivalence was proved by, uh, also by lead K. I'm sorry, I can't read the person's name. Lead K? Lee K, thank you. Lee K Yasuda uh, for linearly reductive case. Uh, so this is quasi Gorenstein. Uh, uh, of course, uh, when the group scheme is linearly reductive, uh, the rings of invariant is the uh, direct sum and subring uh, of the polynomial ring. So it is strongly F regular. And, and uh, in this case, uh, quasi Gorenstein, of course, it means Gorenstein. Uh, and uh, uh, on the class group, we, we have the following. Uh, the equivalence, uh, it is very easy to see that the uh, rank of the module is also preserved by tensoring the polynomial ring. T taking the double dual does not change the rank of a module. So rank one reflexive modules corresponds to rank one equivariant uh, modules. So there is an isomorphism of the uh, class group and the equivariant class group. So using this fact, we can prove that, assume that S is a UFD and A is the ring of invariants, then the class group is isomorphic to the uh, character group of G. And it is isomorphic to the group, uh, group of uh, group-like elements of KG. So uh, in particular, A is a UFD in this case, uh, if and only if the character group is trivial. 
now I'd like to uh, only uh, 15 minutes. So from now, uh, k is a perfect field of characteristic p and g a finite k group scheme via d dimensional g module. It's the symmetric algebra of V, and T is the smash product of S and KG star. So the mod, K, mod T is uh, the category of G, GS modules. And A is the ring of invariance. And we assume, always assume that G is, G is small. Uh, now I'd like to talk about the Frobenius twist of the representation. If G is et al, then EG to G is an isomorphism of group schemes. So for a G module W, EG module EW is a uh, G module again uh, through this isomorphism. So if G is a constant finite group and uh, W is W1, WD, and G is in G, and uh, Aij is the matrix of G on W, then uh, the Frobenius twist Ew, the repre representation matrix of G on Ew is given by you take the uh, one over P eth roots or, or P eth roots of e, each entry. Then you uh, get a new representation of a finite group. group. This is a Frobenius twist. And uh, uh, using this Frobenius twist, we can, we have the mod GB to mod GB. Uh, the Frobenius twist is a functor from here to here. Now, uh, it induces the group uh, homomorphism uh, Frobenius twist from EM such that EM is EM. So this is the Frobenius twist of uh, theta star GS and theta circle GS. Now, uh, B is called finite F representation type or FFRT when uh, we decompose EB into the direct sum of indecomposable modules as B modules, then we only need finitely many indecomposable summons up to degree shifting. Then we say that uh, B is FFRT in the graded sense. Now, uh, let K be the algebraic closure of F3T, where T is uh, variable, then G is Z over 3Z squared. So it is a abelian group of order nine. Uh, and uh, when we consider uh, the three-dimensional representation V alpha uh, given by the matrices, G1 goes to this Jordan canonical form, and G2 go to this matrix. Then uh, for different alpha, uh, V alpha are not isomorphic to each other. It is very easy to prove. Then uh, when we twist uh, V equals to VT by the Frobenius, then the first Frobenius twist is V to the T P over one and uh, 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 da, da, da. so they are all different. Using this fact, uh, we can prove that uh, for this V equals to VT above, uh, there is no pseudo reflection, so it is small action, and the ring of invariance uh, is not FFRT. Next, uh, what about the case that K is algebraic over the prime field FP? So, for example, when we consider the group of, of order three and we 
erase, we only consider this, then we, we don't know it is of FFRT or not. I, I don't know. So the permutation action of the uh, A3 on the th three-dimensional uh, vector space, uh, we, we don't know. Uh, no, I, I don't know uh, if it is FFRT or not in characteristic three. Next, I'd like to talk about the uh, Frobenius limit. So the Frobenius limit is uh, we take for alpha in this group, theta circle, we take the, uh, we can take the Frobenius limit, uh, Frobenius twist of each object. So we can take the limit. So this makes sense. Of course, we don't know the existence, uh, but when it exists, we call it the uh, Frobenius limit. And uh, what we uh, proved is with Peter, uh, we proved that for uh, constant to finite groups. And with uh, Fumiya Kobayashi, uh, we proved that uh, for the etal groups. Uh, and let G be etal and F be an S finite S reflexive Q graded GS module, which is a graded GS submodule of some S finite S free Q graded GS module then the Frobenius limit exists, and we have that Frobenius limit of F is uh, mod modulo the rank. It is essentially this module. So it converges into this one module. So the rank also, of course, preserved, but uh, except for the rank, uh, it is it converges into one module by Frobenius. Using this, let G be any finite K group scheme, not necessarily et al. And F be as in the theorem. Then uh, the Frobenius limit of FG can be described in the uh, linear combination of indecomposable modules, where MI is defined as follows. When we take the tensor product of S with the uh, indecomposable projective module of uh, uh, indecomposable projective G module, then S tensor PI is a GS module. Then uh, we take the G invariance, then MI is an indecomposable uh, module over the ring of invariance. In this way, uh, when uh, V1, VR are simple G modules, the complete list of simple G modules, then uh, taking the projective cover, uh, P1 to PR is the complete list of indecomposable G modules. And uh, the, only these, uh, modules M1 to MR appears in the Frobenius limit. So although uh, the ring of invariance may not be FFRT, uh, asymptotically uh, the Frobenius limit is uh, FFRT, I think. <laughs> so. Uh, now, let B be a positively graded uh, commutative K algebra, and alpha is the sum in the, this is an element of the uh, theta circle G S. Then we define the sum M alpha to be C M, the coefficient of M. If the Frobenius limit of alpha exists, then SBM alpha is some M FL alpha. Some M alpha, alpha is this one. So this is a generalized, uh, I'm sorry, the, this is the generalized F signature of M alpha. Now, the uh, the original uh, F signature is the uh, uh, SBBB, namely the you take the Frobenius twist of B, EB, and uh, you count the number of free summons and divide by P to the DE and take the limit. This is the uh, 
uh, uh, F signature. Then, uh, Frobenius F signature exists. It is proved by Tucker. And uh, it lies between uh, 0 to 1. And uh, SP is positive uh, if and only if B is strongly F regular. And SB is 1 if and only if B is regular. So uh, the F signature is uh, uh, deeply connected to the ring theoretical property of B. Now, uh, it, it is what's uh, proved by uh, Carvajal uh, Rojas uh, again. Uh, this is uh, the F signature. Uh, of the ring of invariance A is uh, 1 over dim k kg uh, if uh, G is linearly reductive. This was uh, first proved by uh, Watanabe and Yoshida for constant groups for uh, relative minimal Hilbert Kuntz multiplicity, uh, which is, uh, agrees with uh, the F signature. And uh, later, uh, if G is not linearly reductive, namely uh, the group is not linearly reductive, then the uh, subring A is not a direct sum and of the polynomial ring S. This is equi equivalent to say that A is not strongly F regular, and again it is uh, equivalent to say that uh, SA is zero. This was proved, proved uh, by Brewer and independently by Yasuda. Uh, these, I always talk about this, uh, and this and this. And so, and Karlovahas, Rojas, Shrid, Taka is for et al. group schemes, right? For uh, in this case. Now uh, we can prove uh, this theorem using this uh, Frobenius limit. Frobenius limit uh, contains the information, complete information of F signature. So using this, uh, if A appears here, then the Frobenius uh, limit, no, 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 F signature is this coefficient. And uh, if A does not appear at all, th then the F signature is zero. Using this idea, we can reprove the, uh, this uh, formula on the F signature, uh, one over the dimension of kg if linearly reductive, and zero if not linearly reductive again, uh, using this idea. I skip the proof. Now I'd like to remark that if G is not et al, then uh, we cannot uh, talk about EV. Maybe this is impossible because EG and G are not isomorphic, so we cannot consider that EV is a G module. Uh, nevertheless, we can take the uh, information on the invariant uh, rings, not, not upstairs, but on the downstairs of the ring of invariance, we can uh, talk about the Frobenius limits using this idea. So that's all. Thank you. Are there any questions? OK, if there are not any questions, I would like very much to thank, thank Professor Shimoto.